In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Uh, welcome, welcome to all those joining us online. Welcome uh, most especially to those here present, to the family and friends of Archbishop Philip, um, his brothers and sisters, a wholehearted welcome to you all. Um, brothers and sisters, don't we wish uh, that this wasn't happening? Don't we wish we weren't here? Don't we wish that it wasn't happening in the way that at the moment it does have to happen? Uh, the bishop who called me to tell me the sad news on the morning of the 13th was in tears when he did so. Uh, I'm sure there have been many tears since then, and today is a day for tears as well. We need not be ashamed of them or restrain them. Today is also, though, a day of hope. Why hope? Because uh, the Lord is here. The Lord is with us. The Lord lives in the liturgy of his church and is here to take up the soul of Archbishop Philip and the griefs of all of us to take them up into his cross and resurrection and transform them. This week, we don't use this prayer uh, during this Mass, but this week there has been a prayer uh, which talks, to paraphrase it a little, that talks of how whenever the Mass is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. The work of our redemption is accomplished. That is what is happening here and now for all of us. The work of completion of redemption in Archbishop Philip, the ongoing work of redemption in all of us. And so let us open our hearts to the presence of the Lord this work of the Lord and enter into this Mass. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, 
in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven. 
not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. Uh, There are so many settings in which to have known Archbishop Philip um, as a member of his family or in his school and student days in Rome, in the seminaries and the parishes he served, as Bishop of Paisley, Archbishop of Glasgow. Uh, There were the many circles he moved in uh, of ecumenical dialogue, Catholic education about which he was so engaged and realistic, the civic life of Glasgow, not forgetting its sport. So many people touched by him, so many aspects to a life, so many perspectives to view it from. Three score years and ten. Our memories are fragments of a greater whole, and that whole, the mystery of a person, is in the mind and hands of God. On the earth, the broken arcs, in the heaven, a perfect round. Today, in Christ, we remember Philip's life, we give thanks for it, and we pray for its completion and the comfort of the bereaved. We bring him and ourselves before God in a literal and metaphorical great Eucharistic prayer of hope and affection. The image that uh, comes to me is of a great tree felled unexpectedly in the middle of the night. And only when we woke up the day following did we begin to divine what had happened, did we begin to grasp the depth of its roots to see the space this tree occupied, the shelter it gave, and what we have personally and collectively lost. This uprooting has changed the landscapes of so many lives. Tree seems right. The timber of this man was sound. It was sound all through, at a time when hollowness or rottenness seemed to surface with disheartening regularity, this was a comfort. I think we all felt this soundness and relied on it more than we knew. Now, eulogy is no part of liturgy. It's the last thing Philip would have wanted. He was not a self-advertising man. It's not we, what we want. We are probably still uh, too numb. But the prohibition of eulogy doesn't mean we have to talk abstractions. Surely we can acclaim the providence of God the presence of Christ and the action of the Holy Spirit within him. From his birth 70 years ago to his committal today, from his baptism to this Eucharist, from the pouring of that first water to the final sprinkling of his remains. There seems a rare wholeness here. Surely we can acknowledge 
how the grace of his baptism and of his ordination grew and flowered in him, how the Lord was indeed his shepherd and through him shepherded others, how his priesthood became a true spiritual fatherhood which has left its trace on all of us. Looking uh, at it from our side, which is the only side we have, as it were, we are commending to God today someone who wasn't small in any way, uh, Big Phil, someone of gravitas, and someone in whom heart and head came together, possessed of intellectual force and clarity and at the same time of great human warmth. There have been so many testimonies to this, and um, I add my thanks to, to those of others, to all who have sent condolences. Philip might have passed his life in the green pastures of dogmatic theology, or by uh, the restful waters of seminary teaching, if they exist, or, or of promising ecumenical dialogue, but he accepted pastoral assignments and he cherished them. He had a gift for friendship and insight into people. During our ad limina visit with the Pope in 2018, I think it was, he said to the Holy Father, I miss the parish and got a delighted thumbs up from the Pope. As a pastor, especially here in Glasgow, and for a difficult while in Edinburgh too, he had plenty of valleys of darkness to walk through with others, with unsettled priests, survivors of abuse, victims of accidents, and he always did so in such a genuine, heartfelt way. The bin lorry episode, the helicopter on the roof, his concern for asylum seekers, a lady from my own diocese whose father died in the James Watt Street fire of 1968, sent me this. I have happy memories of the Archbishop when he so kindly agreed to celebrate Mass for my dad and the many others that died in James Watt Street. It was said exactly 50 years later. It was beautiful, and he spoke with gentleness and love. I felt truly humbled when he talked about my life during the homily. Somehow, his love and understanding took away so much of my pain, I will always be grateful. He wept with those who wept. Like the psalmist, at times he also had his own drooping spirit to walk with. He was actually a shy and sensitive man. He felt pressures, and there were certainly more than he voiced. He took things to heart, literally, and we know with what consequences. Perhaps we need to be more careful of each other's hearts. Uh, for myself, I only came to know a Bishop, as he was then, Bishop Philip, after becoming Bishop myself in 2011, but I had already encountered him during the papal visit uh, the year before at the Mass at Bella Houston, and uh, bishops and abbots were waiting in a tent. He went out to look at the singing crowds full of young people, and he came back with his face flushed, crying, the faith is alive, the faith is alive. Well, I thought this isn't a tired, box-ticking cleric. He seemed an almost childlike enthusiast. So the memories remain, uh, voicing 
our apology for child abuse in this cathedral, preaching to seminarians in the crypt of St. Peter's, urging them in his halting straight from the heart way to put Christ at the center of their lives everywhere and always and find their integrity in him. Uh, responding explosively to a paper put before him at a bishop's meeting, where's Christ in this? Or after a glass or two of wine at a late Spanish dinner in Salamanca, launching into the intricacies of 16th century Eucharistic theology. Uh, how good, how apt, how consoling that he should go to God on the solemnity of St. Kentigern. Uh, I have to say that um, while I was preparing this homily and at this moment I rather uh, feel his eye on me which is a little unnerving um, but I could sort of imagine him saying you know go for it Hugh go for it. Uh, this tree had a root the deep Catholic Christian faith he had received from his family and through that faith flowed the sacramental sap that nourished and greened his life. It wasn't hard to choose the readings, the Eucharistic climax of the discourse from John chapter 6, which we just heard in the Gospel, Isaiah's vision of the banquet on the mountain top, the psalm that ends with the feast in the temple when the shepherd turns into the welcoming host, precisely what we pray for today for Archbishop Philip. And here was the heart of the man, here along with his family and his city were the loves that moved him, the Gospel of John. He treasured it, the person of Christ, God and man, born of the Virgin, he loved Our Lady, risen from the dead, and the same Lord's real, substantial and permanent presence under the appearances of bread and wine, the food of our soul and the pledge of our resurrection. These are the things that held him together made him a whole and gave him the holding power that he had. It's for believing and confessing and preaching these things he would want to be remembered. Floriat preconio verbi. On this basis he would want his beloved archdiocese and the church in Scotland to move forward. In dark moments, he could say, do we still believe in the Eucharist? He could also say, I find people are fascinated if you speak to them of Christ. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever the Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. So the prophet Isaiah, anyone who eats my flesh and drink, drinks my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. So the gospel, in the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. So the psalmist, with these words, with this hope, let us comfort one another and go on. The great tree goes into the earth as a seed to rest through the winter of time in the dear green place, to rest and to be raised incorruptible. Man's winter, God's spring. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen.
God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Philip, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, hear us. Philip ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For our brother Philip, who served the church as a priest, that he may be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. Lord, hear us. For the Archdiocese of Glasgow, of which Philip was shepherd, that she will flourish by the preaching of the word and the praising of the name of the Lord. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of Philip, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his own friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here and for all assembled through various media to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother Philip. Cleanse him and all the faithful departed of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice, which your departed servant and bishop Philip, while in the body, offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Andrew and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Philip, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In the measure of the possible, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. They say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Philip, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Now, brothers and sisters, we come to these poignant moments of the final commendation and committal of our brother Philip. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Philip in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Philip in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness 
and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Philip to his place of rest. Close, it's all as feeling. 
Brother Philip has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome him to the table of God's children in heaven with faith and hope in eternal life. Let us assist him with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with Archbishop Philip. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you who my Father has blessed, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. All praise to you, Lord of all creation. Praise to you, holy and living God. We praise and bless you for your mercy. We praise and bless you for your kindness. Blessed is the Lord our God. You sanctify the homes of the living and make holy the places of the dead. You alone open the gates of righteousness and lead us to the dwellings of the saints. Blessed is the Lord our God. We praise you, our refuge and our strength. We bless you, our God and Redeemer. Your praise is always in our hearts and on our lips. We remember the mighty deeds of the covenant. Blessed is the Lord our God. Is the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, remember the mercy with which you graced your servant Philip in life. Receive him, we pray, into the mansions of the saints. As we make ready our brother's resting place, look also with favour on those who mourn and comfort them in their loss through Christ our Lord. Because God has chosen to call our brother from this life to himself, we commit his body to its resting place, for we are dust and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our brother to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. For our brother Philip, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, 
you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Philip and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life, give to our brother eternal life. We praise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You promised paradise to the repentant thief, bring Philip to the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all your saints. We pray to the Lord. He was nourished with your body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Archbishop Philip. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Now let us pray to the Father as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty and merciful God, eternal shepherd of your people, listen to our prayers and grant that your servant Philip, our bishop, to whom you have entrusted the care of this church, may enter the joy of his eternal master, there to receive the rich reward of his labors through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. So, well, thank you. I wish I could, I wish we could mingle and, and speak. God bless you and comfort you. And, um.